Fantastic. Okay. Welcome along, everyone, uh, to the BTRM information session uh, today. I was going to say this evening, but for some of you, uh, it's the morning. For some of you, it's the afternoon. Uh, some of you, late evening. Um, uh, it's great to see you guys here. Um, and we can uh, potentially later on when it comes to the question and answer session, um, we can actually, we can open up the microphone, Zed. We'll see. Um, okay, so my name's Jeff Brown and I'm basically responsible for uh, everything that is not to do with the content of the programme. Um, so any questions on the content of the programme, uh, you can uh, submit to Pericles, who's going to be delivering part of this presentation. There he is, with a wave of his hand. And with a wave of his hand, let's get let's get us started. Um, okay, so these are this is what we're going to take you through um, for today's presentation. We're going to talk about what the BTRM actually is. Hopefully by the end of the presentation, uh, you'll have a really good sense of what this program is all about. And in particular, we'll talk about how it's useful for you, why it's beneficial to you. Um, we'll touch upon the history of the program as well, the evolution of the, the BTRM program. We'll talk about the faculty. Um, what kind of profile or background you need to have uh, in order to um, in order to be suitable uh, to attend the program. We'll talk about what the BTRM journey is literally from today to the time you graduate from the program, what that consists of, what it looks like. Uh, we'll break down the syllabus in quite some detail, module to module. We'll talk about the certificate itself, um, who accredits the BTRM program, uh, and one or two testimonials as well. Um, we'll also talk about getting in touch with BTRM alumni contacts, uh, the study partner program for those of you who would prefer to study with somebody else, uh, and, and the help desk will take you through as well. Um, and we'll conclude with a Q&A session, although we can run through uh, questions. Um, if you've got questions as we go through this presentation, then feel free to bring them up on the chat and we'll do what we can to answer them as comprehensively as possible. OK, so what is it about? Um, it's an asset liability management course ALM it's it's is a core discipline in banking um, which I'm sure you all know uh, otherwise you wouldn't be attending this information session it's one that must be mastered by every bank so literally um, every bank no matter how big or small has to have a treasury department or a treasury representative if, if it is a small bank um, so this is extremely important this is the certificate of bank treasury risk management um, it's important to emphasize that it's a six month uh, part time course um, for those of you um, working in well, every aspect of bank balance sheet risk management and ALM. Uh, it's practitioner led. It's designed by practitioners. Um, literally, it's designed by practitioners. Um, and what they had as the focal point of their objective was to design a program that was as useful as possible for practitioners. That was the, um, the main emphasis of the program. So practical relevance. Uh, it's unique as the only global professional qualification exclusively for bank, treasury, finance and risk professionals. Um, you can take that as read. That's literally um, what this is about. Uh, a global professional qualification. Um, it was devised by Morad Chowdhury, who I'm sure, um, well, you, you, many of you, if not all of you, uh, know who Morad is. Um, he's written the classic textbooks in this subject. Um, and he came together with World Business Strategies, 
um, also known as WBS training. Uh, and as a partnership, um, they produced the BTRM program. We are celebrating the 10th anniversary on the 11th of May. Um, so uh, that should be um, uh, a fun event, uh, to say the least. It's in its 10th year. Um, the 19th cohort begins on the 10th of April. So the very first program uh, began in May 2014. It's evolved enormously since then um, because there's always changes going on in the banking sector. Um, and so it's it, it evolved. Um, every six months we, we conduct a review. The faculty conducts uh, a syllabus review to make sure we're up to date with everything that's going on in the world. So what are the, the benefits of the program? Well, in summary, it's so just to emphasize, first of all, this is a professional qualification. It's not a university uh, qualification. It's not an academic qualification. This is very specifically a professional qualification. So similar, for example, um, uh, to the CFA, FRM, CQF, in, in, insofar as they are professional qualifications, not academic qualifications. So in other words, going through these programs, it should be useful uh, for your role. It's not always the case, actually, with the CFA, with the FRM, um, the, C, the CQF, and I've been involved in all of these qualifications, um, and it depends on what role you're doing. But the BTRM is very specific. It's, it, I would say it's the most applied banking program in the world. Um, it's internationally renowned. Um, we are accredited also by um, the Association of Corporate Treasurers, six-month program, um, part-time. Uh, so for those of you who are working, who've got work commitments, for those of you who've got family commitments as well, um, this is still for you. Um, it's uh, um, you know, specifically for, there's many senior um, uh, people working in this space, in the treasury space, um, ALM space, um, who go through this program as well and who have been through the program. Um, and I'll talk about the number of hours that it takes to, uh, you know, each week, roughly the number of hours um, uh, of study time. Uh, to give you an idea of um, what kind of work, what kind of commitment this takes for you. Um, very practical, the uh, faculty is international. Um, a lot of them are world-renowned, award-winning uh, professionals in this field and so on. And um, those of you who complete the program, or you can, you can attend all future BTRM programs as well. So any syllabus changes that occur in the future, you can watch those uh, as well. Um, you've got access to all the materials, the webinars, including the additional uh, BTRM webinars. This is outside the BTRM six month program. We run webinars all the time and you have access to those too. Um, who do we partner with? Who is the awarding body? Uh, it is the University of Applied Sciences and Arts, Northwestern Switzerland. They are an amazing organization. They're very um, practically oriented. They've got a global network, um, very strong international ties for both teaching and research purposes. Um, and uh, well, it, it offers people from all over the world a very um, you know, diverse and practically oriented program, programs uh, of education uh, and learning in general. It's worth checking them out. They're, they're a really um, powerful organization. Okay, so the faculty, um, they are, well, they're, they're, a lot of them are very well known. Um, uh, they're very much experts in, in their own field. We hand pick who teaches on this program uh, to ensure that you know the quality is maintained at a really high level with every topic area throughout each module. Um, we've got people like Michael Eichhorn, 
uh, on it. He's uh, an MD at Credit Suisse. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and he's been working as a practitioner and also in academia um, for a very long time, uh, over 20 years, I think. Um, I think he's global head of treasury and liquidity risk at Credit Suisse at the moment. Um, he also worked at RBS. He was global treasury CRO uh, at RBS. Um, he's got a PhD as well, and he's you know uh, very well recognised internationally. Peter Eisenhardt is another guy. Um, he's at, he's secretary general of the International Council of Securities Associations. Um, He's worked in treasury. He's worked in uh, bond options trading and money market trading, repo credit. I mean, he's done the lot. He's worked at BAML. He's worked at JP Morgan. He's worked in New York, in Tokyo, in London. You know, he's, his career spans, I think, well over three decades. Extremely eloquent when it comes to teaching. All of these... Um, this entire faculty, they, they essentially teach what they do on their desks. That's really the, the kind of the question that Morad asks when interviewing candidates, if you like, or talking over lunch uh, with candidates to teach on the programme. Um, you know, what do you do on the desk and can you teach that? So that's how practical and applied this is. Jonathan Farnan, he's another guy, he's much younger. Um, he's director in the Treasury Markets team at Standard Chartered. Uh, and I think that he moved from Goldman Sachs about eight years ago. And at Goldman Sachs, he was a member of their treasury team as well. Great teacher. Um, amazing teacher and um, an amazing guy and so on. I'm, I'm not going to um, talk about the entire faculty because that would take ages to do that. But they are exceptional. They really are. Um, so I, I think if you do join this program, you'll you'll enjoy you'll enjoy them. Um, so this is it, really this is just uh, um, you know how much the BTRM has grown uh, since its inception in May 2014. Cohort 19, as I was saying earlier, is underway from the 10th of April. Um, so uh, and you know more and more students. Uh, enroll every year. In terms of the, your profile, um, yeah, the, these are the, some of the profiles that um, that you would need to have, really. Um, either a, these professional profiles or these academic profiles. And what I would suggest is that if you um, don't have one of these backgrounds, um, and you do want to do the BTRM, if you want to move into this space, for example, you definitely need to talk to us first, because what the last thing we want is for you to enroll onto the programme, only to find that it, it goes over your head. Um, so really, you, you should have um, this kind of background. So the profiles of candidates, I mean, just looking at the people who are attending um, today's presentation, you know you're you're coming from all over the world and this is really the you know it, it's part of the i say the diversity of this program I mean, it it's it is diverse but more to the point it's relevant really to everybody working in a bank wherever you are in the world and even some of you guys attending today i can see you're from south america uk europe india uae Singapore. Wow, early in the morning for you. Um, and the, the, the general um, profile of candidates who come through this program is, you know, in, the, in uh, North and South America. Um, and when I say South America, I really mean that there's so many people from uh, Chile and Brazil in particular, um, Peru, Colombia, and then you've got all over Europe, obviously. Switzerland, Netherlands, UK, Asia, Singapore, um, uh, Australia, um, a lot from Australia. So, and I'll come on to contacting alumni a little bit later, in fact, towards the end of the presentation, because that's uh, 
a very worthwhile thing to do in order to this is a, gather, a gathering information exercise really this presentation and you want to carry on doing that as much as possible so that you've got a full picture and sense of what this program is about so contacting alumni is um is pretty important these are some of the employers who are sending uh delegates on the program there's a lot of them obviously um and you can see some consultancies there so they put um delegates through as well your you know eys and um uh, pwcs of this world um um and i think it's uh, a really useful program for uh, consultancies working in certain positions pricing positions to be able to communicate with their clients clearly um, in this area but otherwise yeah a, a lot of banks so the btrm journey starts now um, as i say just gather as much information as possible about this program um, you know today's session is about talking giving you a, a really comprehensive overview of the program. Uh, um, Pericles will uh, take you through the syllabus of the program uh, in detail, uh, the most important part of this presentation. And then uh, this session is also recorded. So if you, um, uh, if you need to review this session in order to help to make up your minds as to whether or not to enroll, then get in touch with me. Uh, and I'll send you a recording of the session. Um, once you've made a decision, if you do decide to enroll, you apply uh, via the registration form. We say three working days for the admissions team to come back to you, but it's actually, um, well, uh, a lot less, usually within one working day. And the closer we get to the start of the program, it's usually within hours. Um, you then do the primer. Uh, on banking so that everybody is up to speed uh, and uh, starting at the same level. You receive your full set of course materials, including textbooks. Um, and then you start 10th of April, five modules. Um, uh, and there's an online test at the end of each module. Uh, I'll leave Pericles to take you through that. And then a final three hour unseen written exam at the very end of the program. Um, uh, of which the pass mark is 60%, uh, 80% grants a distinction. There's not many who get a distinction. Uh, Pericles um, is probably a bit too humble for, for, to, to appreciate me uh, saying that he did get a distinction. Um, and he's one of the very, very few people who's completed the program uh, who's on the faculty. Uh, I think there's one other person uh, who's on the faculty. Um, this is also not like the CFA. This isn't to test, you know, um, a, you know, a kind of quota of how many people the awarding body, the CFA Institute, want to pass each year. It is not that. This is all about giving you the knowledge and skill set, the tools, so that you can do your job to the best of your ability that's what this is about it's not about passing or failing and on the contrary so you know if um, anyone is struggling uh, with any content areas of the program then we do everything in our power to help them via the btrm forum or via a direct conversation with uh, faculty members we want to make sure that everybody who enrolls onto this program uh, completes the program with a comprehensive feeling of confidence um, about the knowledge and skills you will have acquired by that time. So we are um, accredited by, fully accredited by the Association of Corporate Treasurers, um, otherwise known as the ACT. This is uh, quite recent. We spent months and months um, in discussions with them sending them reports, sending them uh, facts and figures and talking to them endlessly about why this program is so useful. And uh, recently they decided, right, this is definitely worthy of accreditation. They do not accredit many programs at all. So we're really proud of this. The other um, advantage is that for those who 
um, complete the program, you will be exempt from certain modules of certain courses of theirs, of the ACTs, um, and those will be determined in the next few weeks. So this is something that we're in discussion with them at the moment. We've been doing a mapping exercise between the BTRM and between and, and their courses, and uh, we're talking about you know what what discounts you can get for their courses and what what kind of exemptions you get and so on. So it's that's really exciting. We're also accredited by the Chartered Institute for Securities and Investment, um, which is fantastic. Um, CPD hours as well, three hundred hours. Uh, this program, which gives you some kind, when I say 300 hours, I don't mean lecture hours. Um, I mean, you know, lectures plus your own study time. So it's about 10, 11 hours a week, including lecture times. Um, but that does vary enormously. For some of you, it might be a lot less. For some of you, it might, it might be more. Uh, we're also accredited by the American Bankers Association, um, which is fantastic as well when we when that came through. Uh, a lot of testimonials, and you can see these on our website as well. Um, the very first one, I think, sums us up really nicely. I really liked uh, the way that one would learn something at a lecture and then go back to the office and apply it the next day uh, in the day job. Uh, it was that practical and it was that practical and relevant a course a apologies my eyesight is absolutely terrible so i need a magnifying glass to read that but anyway there's some amazing testimonials um and i'll talk about btrm alumni in general and their uh, feedback on the program towards the end of the presentation okay i think uh pericles i'll hand over to you and uh, Pericles will take you through, as I say, he's been through the program, he teaches on the program, so he will take you through uh, the syllabus. Jeff, thanks. Thanks a lot and welcome everybody. Um, so just a little bit of background on myself. Jeff just said that uh, I sat the program. I do have this hobby uh, of studying. It's a weird hobby, I know, um, but I do want to echo what Jeff said. Uh, if I compare um, the BTRM, uh, I've said the CFA, I've said the FRM and a couple of other things, it's by far the most practically relevant uh, qualification I've encountered. It's been designed by practitioners, it's taught by practitioners and it's aimed towards practitioners, which is absolutely great. Nothing wrong with academics, but you know, here we take in a, a purely practical stance. Now, in terms of the structure, um, of the prog program itself. It is an online study, it's an independent study program. Um, now, let me though lay out some important things and if I may, I will skip the first box on the top right. Even though we're online and even though people can, work, uh, can study the recorded lectures at their own time or they can revisit lectures that have been recorded, the lectures are live. This is unlike a lot of other uh, online courses or anything else you want to call it, where they just have this recording that it repeats itself in perpetuity. We absolutely sit live to teach, so there's time for questions, people can ask questions in real time, and we, because it is live, we always bring the latest information there. It's not a stale recording that's been around for a while. There's class slides that are being shared on the online portal, everything, by the way, it's on the portal. Uh, we're doing case studies, there are some sample templates of, for example, ALCO policies that are being shared for people to look at and spreadsheet models. Um, there's ad hoc web webinars, quite a few of them, actually, I have to admit. Uh, and now let me come back to the first uh, point, the first block, which very much links to the last block on this page. The, we are for lifelong learning. The library is accessible to all um, uh, successful participants of the course, and there's a dedicated BTRM online forum. If you ask me, I think that's by far the most valuable resource, because you have a question, a practical question from your day-to-day -day work, you can post it there, and everybody who's been on the BTRM project program will be able to read it and contribute. 
and it's absolutely fantastic. I genuinely think that this is one of the biggest malleable elements uh, of the course to to practitioners. Of course, on top of all the knowledge that is being accumulated as part of of what we look at. Now, in terms of the structure, let's start with the big picture before we come to uh, to a little bit more detail. It's a twenty three weeks of lectures and the exam, and the more the course is split into five modules where we're looking at balance sheet risk management, we're looking at treasury operating model, we're looking at strategic asset liability management and financial markets, bank liquidity risk management as part of module four, and capital management as part of module five. At the end of each module, there's an online multiple choice test. So we want to make sure that students are progressing appropriately uh, and that they have uh, understood the, the contents that have been taught up until then. Obviously, at the end of all modules, there's the reading exam. And subject to passing, and the rates were in a previous, the, you know, the passing rates of, if it's 60%, you saw it in the previous slide, then you get the BTRM certification, as well as the certification uh, from uh, the Northwestern Fachhochschule in, in Switzerland. Now, let, let's have a look a little bit in more detail, because it's obviously really important for everybody. You want to decide whether you want to take the course. You want to make sure that what you're going to be studying is relevant to yourselves. Uh, so we've seen the titles of the five modules. Let, let's now see the composition. So the first module looks at balance sheet risk uh, management. And I'm not going to necessarily be repeating the word bank in front of every module because we've been very clear. This is a bank treasury qualification. Everything uh, is linked to that. Uh, don't worry, there's not that there's no number one uh, lecture uh, underneath, but the first the, the first lecture, and that's why it's missing, it's an introductory one, right? So it's usually Murad who, who welcomes everybody on the course. We start with lectures, well, we start, we continue with lectures two and three that are focusing on asset liability management, strategic asset liability management, looking at things such as balance sheet optimization, looking at various banking products, interest rate benchmarks, uh, something that for a lot of you has been quite significant over the last few years with the transition of IBORs and the likes. We look at things such as for uh, FX hedging and, and the management of in net interest income and net interest margin. We're moving on to the Basel III regulatory framework. This is taught by yours truly, where we're looking at capital and liquidity rules. Uh, we're going through in extensive detail the evolution of the banking frameworks, the content, uh, and also the latest reforms that sometimes they're euphemistically called Basel IV. Recently, I read them somewhere as Basel 3.1. There's none of that. But be that as it may, it is quite important. We live in a regulated, uh, and we live and work in a regulated uh, banking universe. Therefore, that's something really important. We move on uh, diving deeper into balance sheet risk management by looking at ALM trading and hedging. And that's split in two modules. Uh, we look at money markets. We're looking at banking book interest rate risk management, something hugely important uh, about, well, just over a year ago, uh, we had uh, the Silicon Valley Bank uh, collapse. And by the way, there's a fantastic webinar on the BTRM uh, website and on YouTube uh, doing a little bit of a post-mortem of that. I would highly recommend that you uh, look at that. It's, it's publicly available. You don't need to be part of the course. Um, and there's also some aspects of hedge accounting, but there's also a dedicated uh, uh, module on that one specifically. So this gives you an idea of how we, we're starting by introducing some of the fundamental elements of balance sheet risk management. We primarily have to do with ALM and the regulation that is engulfing all of this. Then we move to bank ALM operating model and risk management governance, because governance is absolutely fundamental. And we start by looking at Treasury operating models, allow me to say. It's a clear message of, of lecture number seven that there's no one right target operating model. So what's important to learn out of, of this uh, lecture is what is the one that may work better for yourselves? What are the appropriate reporting lines and all the other details that you will need in order to advise your organization to better set up their operating model? We're continuing on the strand of asset liability management by also looking at the terms of reference and the charter of the ALCO, which is the fundamental and the ultimately responsible body for asset liability management. 
so we go into some detail, and there's some templates that are being shared, etc. And and then we're looking at how the different pieces of credit risk, asset liability management, and liquidity risk come together into enterprise risk management, which is what you could call as the umbrella of the various risks that need to be managed. Primary financial risks, but also non-financial risks, you will see that we do have a, a lecture on operational risk management as well, and some other related uh, elements. Um, we're looking, there's uh, a dedicated lecture on IFRS 9 provisioning, really important for all of you that again are in the banking world, uh, linked obviously to the loan loss provision policy that we, we we spoke about just previously how do we calculate cel uh, what are the different stages in terms of ifrs 9 etc but now again importantly for for the people who may be familiar at least with the titles i've used keep in mind that there's a dedicated two hour class that goes into a lot of depth into all of these topics so even for for myself that i came in as a practitioner i've, I've been working for over 20 years and I thought, okay, let me try uh, this out. Uh, I've heard good things about the BTRM. I still learned so much out of it because it was not just titles and scratching the surface. Um, module three, we're looking at the more strategic aspects of ALM and also putting them in the context of financial markets. Uh, we're looking at capital market disciplines for bank issuers, uh, that's lecture 10. So concepts such as additional tier one and tier two capital, also looking at secured and unsecured debt. Securitization follows, quite important. How can we use securitization for balance sheet management? What are the implications? What are the regulatory uh, frameworks that are governing now since the global financial crisis that was to a very large extent driven by the misbehaviors in, in securitization? Uh, a little bit of an anecdote. I, I used to live and work in New York City uh, and I left in 2007. I want to joke that it was foresight, but it was absolutely not. It was just random. It's so it happened that I left just before uh, the collapse of the banking system. And I have to say, looking back, uh, what we were doing in the securitization space, securitization space, I, I, I feel horror. But you know, hindsight is always 2020. Um, recovery plan and resolution planning. Um, a lot of you may be aware this is such an important aspect of regulatory oversight. Uh, it's something that is being pushed by regulators in all countries. Banks need to be prepared to avoid a situation like Lehman that when it collapsed, nobody had an idea of what to do uh, and how to do it. Investor relations and the credit rating process, equally important. Uh, what do we do to get a formal credit rating? How do we approach it? How do we manage investor relations as a whole? A treasury function within a bank needs is, is often tasked with, at least if not leading these aspects contributing these aspects for the, the dedicated if it exists investor relations department to be able to to make all these external communications module four goes now into bank liquidity risk management and there's a number of sessions specifically to liquidity risk management given how important it is we're starting by looking at the wider picture looking at the frameworks looking at the risk appetite uh, and, and the liquidity policy. We also start discussing about some discounting and, and pricing techniques that have developed post the crash. Um, let me not go into details here. Uh, Kevin Liddy, who's doing this, is, is incredibly good at, uh, at providing these details. It's also really important to, to look at about risk metrics and limits, look at collateral management and the various XVAs, very much linked to the changes that were introduced by the 2008 financial crisis, we also realized that, well, you know, uh, what used to be called risk, if there's one thing, um, allow me to say, that we learned out of the global financial crisis is that there's no such thing as risk-free. And therefore, a number of uh, valuation adjustments came up. We started the credit valuation adjustment, which is still part, explicit part of the Basel regulatory framework, but there's a lot of them. And, and we start explaining how do they actually work in practice? What do they mean for us as a treasury division, as a trader on a floor that needs to price or that needs to accept a price provided to us by uh, a dealer or another counterparty? We're also looking at optimum liability strategies uh, and how do we manage the liquidity buffers? Therefore, we're looking at how can we optimize asset, li asset liability management. The, 
lecture 17 and 18 are obviously quite uh, closely linked. Right? Uh, we're looking at funds transfer pricing and the internal funding curve. How do we construct the curve? What does it mean in terms of FTP, in terms of funds transfer pricing? How do we develop the, uh, the funding policies? What are the different approaches we can see? Uh, and how have they been evolving? Uh, and I think it's Michael who's teaching this and he's absolutely fantastic in bringing us some of the latest uh, insights uh, into this. We continue even further by looking at liquidity reporting, stress testing and ILAP. Um, you can call them pillar two and pillar three aspects, but it's a lot more than that. And also we're looking at intraday uh, liquidity and asset encumbrance. Uh, this is, I have to admit this is one of the lectures I enjoyed a lot in terms of how do we uh, think about asset encumbrance, what does it mean for us, and what can we not do? Why would we not just encumber everything on our balance sheet, given that it makes at least some first principles financial sense? And collateral management, again, incredibly important from a liquidity risk management perspective, whether we're looking at bilateral margin rules or as things have been evolving over the several few years, looking at central clearing uh, uh, for for various types of uh, of derivative instruments, and of course we're talking about central counterparties, the CCPs that are listed here. What is their impact? Uh, what do they mean for us as treasury practitioners? And at some to some extent, what are the implications? What are some of the risks that we may need to keep in mind? That brings us to module five, uh, which is bank capital management, uh, where we're looking at aspects such as capital structure and planning cost of capital and capital allocation, uh, the ICAP, the internal capital adequacy assessment process, that I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, but also reverse stress testing, which is again something, well, it's not new anymore, but uh, it is something really relevant. It is something that is, keeps raising questions. How do we do it in a way that generates meaningful discussion in the organization, right? Yes, we do want the organization to fail, but if it feels that implausible, the way we go about this process, it may feel like a regulatory tick box. Well, it, it's not a, or it shouldn't be. And this lecture will give you a lot of insights about how to do that. And as I mentioned earlier, we also do touch on non-financial risks, primarily operational risk management. Uh, and also we're looking at principles of policy documentation, which is very much linked. How do we document our policies to make sure that from an operational risk management perspective, from a process, people and system perspective, uh, we're not uh, giving rise uh, or that we are me appropriately mitigating any unexpected uh, loss events. Jeff has spoken a lot about the faculty and, and I have no words about the people. All I can say is I look forward to the, the get together, the 10 year get together in London in uh, in, I don't know, five weeks' time uh, or so. But I do want to note some of my colleagues uh, at the BTRM faculty who, who have uh, published uh, some really important heavy-hitting books. Okay, Murad hasn't just published the principles of banking, he's published quite a few of them, uh, but the second edition has recently been released. It's fully updated. Uh, I did contribute uh, uh, to the chapter, uh, one of the chapters there. Uh, it's probably the best uh, reference textbook for anybody who wants to be in banking. And we said all these things about practitioners, but I do enjoy teaching in university as well. And it is my recommended textbook for, for the courses that I'm teaching. Uh, uh, Paulina uh, Bardeva uh, has uh, published the Bank Asset Liability Management Best Practice. Absolutely fantastic book. Michael. Uh, Jeff already mentioned him. He's written about reverse stress testing uh, in banking. And Beata, uh, Beata Lubinska, has also written about asset liability management optimization. And as part of her course, she even shares uh, some spreadsheets that show how you can do this in practice. So, and, and I'm sure we've missed uh, a lot of things. Uh, there's several other publications. Uh, people are quite active. There are the webinars that we've said that they're not just webinars that pertain to the course itself. You will see that uh, there have been way, webinars that are looking at uh, uh, best practices. Uh, I mentioned earlier the one about Silicon Valley Bank, which is absolutely fantastic. Murad and I did another one uh, together about a year ago on the risk management of crypto assets. 
uh, which is something that again was in people's minds. There's lots of them. Um, the, the whole experience of the BTRM is one that this is not a one way learning experience where somebody sits on one side of the camera or um, in the venue uh, in Canary Wharf in London and talks to people. It is something quite, uh, uh, quite interactive and I'm sure that you will appreciate it and you will enjoy it uh, if you decide to join the course. Jeff, I think that's it from my side and I've given you just about 15 minutes to conclude. I hope that's enough. Okay, let's uh, move along. Okay, BTRM alumni support. So, yeah, this is, I think this is really important. So, if you want to get in touch with uh, BTRM alumni from your organization um, uh, or from your country or region, uh, or those who are working in a similar role to the one that you're working in, um, then get in touch with us. And here's, here's the thing, I joined in May last year and I made it my mission to speak to every single person who's completed the program. Um, and 90% uh, of those uh, um, did the full course, the, in other words, attended the lectures. Um, and uh, thank you, Sajid, <laughs> I think so. To, I think Pericles. That's um, clarity personified as far as Pericles's uh, <laughs> presentation is concerned. Thanks for the compliment. <laughs> I just read the, the 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 chat message. I was thinking, where did that come from? Sanjay, thank you. You're really kind. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, and yeah, and and ten percent of people. In fact, I think it's even less than ten percent do the study with the, the self study package, which is just the books. Okay, so you receive the books and you study with those, no access to lectures. And um, the feedback um, that I got for the self-study pack was obviously varied. Um, you know, some thought it was okay and, and some thought it wasn't enough and so on. The feedback I got for um, those who attended the full course um, was absolutely thrilling for me, genuinely thrilling because um, uh, everybody I spoke to was raving about it and it was pretty much unanimous. Um, and so what I do now when it comes to anybody who wants to contact alumni, for example, from your region, from your country, I just send you the whole list. I don't, I'm not selective in the slightest. So you will get a whole list of alumni from your region and you can contact any of them or all of them um, because I'm confident that uh, they'll be constructive in their feedback and also that they'll be very positive because it seems that the experiences of pretty much everybody who's gone through this program is a really good one. Um, so please get in touch if you do want to contact alumni. The study partner program is also really useful for those of you who want to study with somebody else. Um, so, you know, anybody from your organization, if there is somebody from your organization who is on the pro on the April cohort, um, otherwise those from your country or from your region, you're more than welcome and, uh, you know, get in touch with us and we'll, we'll uh, pair you up with somebody or even three of you uh, so that you can enjoy, you know, studying on this program together. Uh, the alumni support desk, um, Pericles has talked about, that's the, the BTRM forum, effectively. An amazing place to ask questions and to share um, your opinions on, you know, if there's going to be another bank collapse in the coming in the coming weeks or months, you can share your opinions on that. And people from all over the world will chip in with their opinions and you learn and it's it's uh, an amazing um, uh aspect of the program the forum okay we've reached the end of the presentation i i really hope that that this has given you a flavor a really full flavor of what this is all about if there's any gaps in what we've been explaining uh, to you today then now's your time to you know to ask us questions um uh, about anything to do with this program
we can't we can't have done that good a job Pericles there's got to be some questions coming up I was uh, about to say either we did great or we everybody really confused but no, no I really doubt it. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if people can unmute or whether they should be typing anyway so that may take some time I think they, they can't unmute um, because there's, there's a lot of you I suggested at the beginning um, uh, of, of the presentation when there weren't so as many I thought yeah maybe we can unmute the problem with un unmuting is that um, people uh, all talk at once and it gets a bit confusing can you explain the nature of questions in the final exam Pericles right okay well I like how forward thinking you are uh, Sajid um, the questions are strictly based on the curriculum um, so we are trying to understand that people have properly, um, so we're trying to evaluate that people have probably understood the concepts that are coming out of the course. Um, the questions are essay based, um, so it's not multiple choice unless something has changed recently that I'm not aware about. Uh, they're uh, conducted remotely, obviously with the help of an online proctor um, um, application let's call it that make sure that you are not sitting next to a google uh well no not even google anymore you know chat gpt and you you kind of uh, start uh, drafting answers out of there and you copy pasting them uh, there's a number of questions uh that are addressing uh, the, and there's also some long form questions some short form questions uh, you get a number of options uh, and then you can uh, respond not to all of them, so you can immediately also cross out some of them. Would they be scenario based? If I understand your question properly, I would say that's not exactly accurate. Uh, for example, we may ask people, um, you know, around the the Basel regulations to explain. Uh, you know, the, this is a very basic thing, but you know, outline the structure of the Basel framework and what implications does it have for uh, for financial risk management. So people will talk about pillar one, which is the quantitative standards, pillar two, which is a supervisory oversight and internal assessments, and pillar three, which is uh, disclosure. Why are these important? Because we calculate, then we make a further assessment, and then we also make sure that the market as part of pillar three can apply further discipline. I don't. I hope this has uh, given you a response. I don't think, though, you should stress about the exam uh, already. Uh, for people who have put the hours that Jeff mentioned, who have watched the lectures, whether live or the recording, that they have done well in the uh, in the online questions, and obviously who have dedicated some time to review, right? Because the content of material is quite extensive. You can't just feel that having gone through the course, you will be able to remember everything towards the end. Uh, but with the, with the appropriate amount of preparation as well, don't worry about the exam at all, you'll do great. I think also just to add to that, um, you know, people don't do um, these programs twice. Uh, you do the CFA once, you do a university degree once, you do the CQF once. And the same with the BTRM. If you enroll, you're only going to go through it once over a six month period. So I always recommend to maximize that opportunity by working your nuts off frankly, um, you know, no matter how busy you are, just acquire as much knowledge during this program as you can. Um, in other words, not just watching the lectures, but doing your own reading, your own research and so on. So that by the end, frankly, with the final exam, you should fly through it. And that's where, you know, uh, that's where you can get a, a distinction and also where maybe you can get the Wiley Award, which is awarded to one person who gets the highest mark in the final exam. But yeah, just maximize the, the opportunity. Yeah, I would call it like that better than working people's, you know, nuts off, uh, <laughs> Jeff, if I may say. So the more you put in, the more you get out. All right, I think that's the point that you, you can't just wing it through the exam, but equally, I would strongly encourage you, just like Jeff did, to not just come with the objective of, okay, let's do, scrape the minimum we can do, pass the exam, and then say, well, I've got this. Why? Because you have such an incredible learning opportunity uh, as part of this program uh, that it's also a little bit, it's worth not wasting it, you know? 
um, and there is the continuous uh, aspects as well in terms of the fora and so on and so forth. All right, I see the, the next question is the exam, oops, a number of questions uh, popped up. Is the final exam three hours? Yes, I believe it is. Um, uh, next question is when will the lecture schedule basically the dates and multiple choice exam dates be available? Uh, Jeff, I'll, I'll hand that over to you. So they're made available once you um, apply uh, and are accepted, they'll be made available with about a week before. So I would say on the 3rd of April, a week before the start of the program, yeah. you'll have Gen all of the dates. Yeah. Yeah. Generally speaking though, uh, Tom, right? Uh, most classes take place on Wednesdays. Uh, sometimes we have additional lectures on some emergent topics or other aspects that may be coming on other days, not on a Friday, don't worry. Uh, and the it's generally speaking, the schedule 5.30 UK time, so that can help people, whether in the Eastern Hemisphere or Western Hemisphere. Uh, not always super convenient, but the recording is available anyway. Sorry, Jeff. It's usually two lectures a week, actually. So, um, and it's normally uh, Mondays and Wednesdays, but it can also be Tuesdays and Thursdays. So, yeah, it varies. It de it's really dependent on the um, the 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 schedule of the lecturer teaching. You know that particular topic area. If they're if they're not available on a Wednesday, they're not going to teach on a Wednesday or a Monday. Um, I will say um, we should. So, once you've got the student guide then that will have all the dates on it um and so you will have ahead of time unless we reschedule things you will have all the dates uh as well as when the tests are they're, they're at the end of each module um and there is a single friday lecture now uh, that has come on you this uh, this cohort uh, so uh yeah. so everything i said was wrong <laughs> no well, when you were taking it absolutely we were we were like we were all wednesdays the occasional monday now it's mostly Wednesdays, quite a few Mondays, the occasional Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> so there you go. Thanks a lot, Ed. Appreciate that. Um, how advanced should your skills in Excel be? I, how much use of practical Excel and workbooks and calculations are used across the course, such as stress testing? Pericles. Right. Um, yeah, I will link the response to this question to the next one that says, are we expect to mathematical calculations? So this is not a course that is testing your Excel skills or your math. Um, for, let me reverse it. To, let's start with the first question, Francis. How advanced should your skills in Excel be? We're not going to test them, right? We're not going to give you a question and tell you go and build a model, an Excel spreadsheet for that. Now, some Excel spreadsheets will be shared as part of the course, but these are more meant to be for tools for you to use rather than for you to develop. So. I wouldn't worry about that. Now, again, if we look at the, and the same for the mathematical calculations, we're not going to ask you, um, generally speaking, to, to, to solve maths. We're not going to ask you to run an optimization algorithm, whether by hand or on Excel or any other product. Do people still use Excel? Yes, they do. I know. It's the question I keep asking myself, and I keep realizing that this a lot more Excel than anybody would expect to. But as part of the course, our role is to teach you treasury risk management, not to teach you Excel, not to teach you uh, math per se. Any background is helpful, but if if one of you has has been working in treasury risk management roles for for a long time, but they're not mathematicians because they came from a you know, uh, a life sciences background or anything else, uh, you shouldn't worry about that. Th this is not, it's not the CQF for that uh, Jeff mentioned earlier. Um, I say to add to that, I think uh, something that Morad always stresses about the exam questions especially is that what he's looking for is understanding and opinions. He wants people that are going to be arguing their side of something. So he cares about that far more than he's not going to just give you a load of maths to do or anything like that. This is, this is do you understand the state of Treasury as it is at the moment and can you defend your understanding of it? Hey, any more, any more for any more? Yeah, so I see a last comment here. 
saying that my primary interest is to get practical knowledge, I can guarantee to you that this is what you're going to be getting. Right. I think with what two minutes to go till the hour is up, we can go beyond the hour, of course, but this uh, seems to be the end of questions for now. Look, um, again, I, I, the, the purpose of this is, you know, to make it as uh, informative and useful as possible insofar as your knowledge of this program is concerned and your sense of this program is concerned. I hope we've gone some way towards achieving that. Um, it's great to see, you know, so many people from so many different regions around the world. And um, thanks very much for attending. How much would the course cost? Okay. Let's. What I'll do is I'll. On the chat. Here we go. So that's the registration form, which includes the course cost. There are also um, there are discounts available. So, um, uh, well, get, get in touch with me. You've probably uh, all got my email address, but just in case. I mean, it's on the slide right there. That's... It's on the slide. Brilliant. Um, and if you want to get in touch with me by phone, you're more than welcome. There's a couple of phone numbers here. If you want to discuss, you know, in detail anything, if you want to run through any aspects of the program, you're more than welcome. Um, and yeah, I hope that's uh, helpful. Any more questions? Now, I should say the standard price is £8,450. Um, if you're self-funded, you don't need to pay any VAT. Uh, also, if you're from outside the UK or the EU, you don't need to pay any VAT. And you can pay in instalments, either in one instalment, if you want to pay the whole fee up front, you can do so, or in two instalments, where you pay 50% up front, 50% uh, in week 11, I think, of the course, or in three instalments, where you pay £1,000 up front, followed by the remaining balance. Uh, in two installments, so 50% of the remaining balance in week 11 and 50% of the remaining balance, I think, in week 21 of the course. So I, th I think it's a really good, um, it's very flexible, basically, uh, in terms of um, giving you some different payment options available. Any more questions? Okay, I think we're done. Pericles, Ed, thanks very much. And uh, look forward to seeing you soon. And everyone else, thank you very much for attending. I hope it's been useful and um, feel free to get in touch whenever you want. Many thanks. Good signing, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.